Jesus gave his life a ransom yonder on Calvary. On Mount Calvary, cruel Calvary, paved the way by blood that we might wear a bright shining crown. Praise his holy name. Salvation has been brought down, O oh, glory. Praise, Praise the Lord. The Lord. Bless the Lord. Salvation has been brought down. Good evening. I'd like to welcome you to the PM service of the Northfield Church of Christ for Sunday, February the 5th. My name is Mark Syme. I'm the minister here at the Northfield Church of Christ. We are singing this evening from the songbook, uh, Songs of Faith and Praise. I will give you the number and the title of the song, just in case you don't have that book. You have another one or you want to Google the title so that you can sing along with us. I have a message uh, that I hope will be appropriate and will be inspirational and helpful to all of us. We will also observe the Lord's Supper. And so if you would turn your songbooks to number 881, the title is Mansion Over the Hilltop. 881, Mansion Over the Hilltop. I'm satisfied with just a cottage below, a little silver and a little gold. But in that city where the ransom will shine, I want a gold one that silver lined. I've got a mansion just over the hilltop. In that bright land where we'll never grow old And someday yonder we will never more wander But walk the streets that are pure as cold Don't think me poor or deserted or lonely I'm not discouraged I'm heaven bound, I'm just a pilgrim in search of a city, I want a mansion, a robe and a clown, I've got a mansion just over the hilltop, in that bright land where we'll never grow home. And someday yonder, we will never more wander. But walk the streets that are pure as gold. Number 898. 898, the title is Paradise Valley. 898, Paradise Valley. <coughs> As I travel through life with this trouble and strife of a glorious hope to give cheer on the way soon my toil will be o'er and I'll rest on that shore with worms turned into day. Up in the beautiful paradise valley by the side of the river of life. Up in the valley, the wonderful valley will be free from all pain and all strife. There we shall live in the rose-tinted garden, neath the shade of the evergreen tree. How I long for the paradise valley, where the beauty of heaven I'll see. As, as I roam the, the hillside, or I list to the tide, as I pluck the sweet flowers that grow in the vale, a faint picture is there of a land bright and fair, where perennial flowers never fail. Up in the beautiful paradise valley, by the side of the river of life. Up in the valley, the wonderful valley will be free from all pain and all strife. 
There we shall live in the rose tinted garden neath the shade of the evergreen tree. How I long for the paradise valley where the beauty of heaven I'll see. Though your garden is rare, it is not to compare with the flowers that bloom in the garden above. In the midst of it grows Sharon's perfect sweet rose, the wonderful flower of love. Up in the beautiful paradise valley by the side of the river of life. Up in the valley, the wonderful valley will be free from all pain and all strife. There we shall live in the rose-tinted garden neath the shade of the evergreen tree. How I long for the paradise valley where the beauty of heaven I'll see. To prepare our minds for the Lord's Supper, we will sing number 335 in memory of the Savior's love. 335. In memory of the Savior's love. In memory of the Savior's love, we keep a sacred feast where every humble, contrite heart is made a welcome guest. By faith we take the bread of life with which our souls are fed. The cup and token of his blood that was for sinners shed. Beneath his banner thus we sing the wonders of his love. And hear and dissipate by faith the heavenly feast of The message this evening is about the heavenly feast above. And uh, we gather about the Lord's table. And we do it just exactly as the song tells us in memory of our Savior's love. This is a sacred feast that we keep here in the kingdom of God, here on earth, the church. And uh, uh, the, the words tell us that by faith we take the bread of life by which our souls are fed. The cup and token of his blood that was for sinners shed. And so as we gather about the table, as we are instructed to do on the first day of the week, let's remember the significance of what happened on that day. Let's make it uh, as if it happened just moments ago that Jesus went to the cross, suffered and died for the sins of mankind. We uh, partake of bread to symbolize his body. We partake of the fruit of the vine to symbolize his blood. Let's pray for the bread, the body of our Lord. Our dear God, we're so thankful that in your a humble and, and magnificent uh, foresight that you sent Jesus to live and dwell among men and that he was our perfect high priest and that he was the perfect sacrifice one time for all. And we're so blessed that he is now the mediator between you and us. We think of his agony that uh, he suffered on the cross and as we would take of this bread, we remember that suffering that he felt. We do this in his most holy name. Amen. The cup and token of his blood that was for sinner shed. Let's pray for the fruit of vine 
the blood of Jesus Christ. We're so uh, awed by the fact that Jesus was willing to uh, leave this earth in an unmagnificent way by suffering so horribly upon the cross. And as he shed his innocent blood, we see that blood as the New Testament of our salvation. We see that blood as that which cleanses our sins. We see that blood as uh, our avenue to uh, live with you forever. Bless us as we partake. We pray it in his most holy name. Amen. The Lord's Supper being completed, we also do something that we are instructed to do on the first day of the week, and that's give back to the Lord. We have examples in our Bibles. Uh, we know that uh, in Old Testament times, they tithed and gave a tenth. In New Testament time, we're told to give as we have been prospered and help us uh, that we might exactly do that, that we would give as we have prospered, that we would put uh, our giving on the front burner rather than on the back burner, and that we would be willing to give with gratitude and appreciation to the church, uh, which Jesus gave his life for. Let's pray for the giving. Help us, dear Heavenly Father, to give with willingness and gratitude, knowing that all good things come down from you. Help those that are in charge of these monies to use them so that uh, more people may come to Christ and that people who are in need may be aided. Bless us in our efforts here on earth to do your will. Help us to lead sinners uh, down the correct path. Bless us in our giving, we pray it in his most holy name. Amen. And the song before the lesson is number 890. 890. Beautiful song. In the land of fadeless day. We will sing the first four verses and then we will sing the chorus at the end. The first four verses. The, actually, there are just four. Four verses and then the chorus. <clears throat> In the land of fadeless day lies a city for square. It shall never pass away, and there is no night there. All the gates of pearl are made in the city for square. All the streets with gold are laid, and there is no night there. And the gate shall never close to the city for square. There life's crystal river flows, and there is no night there. There they need no sunshine bright, in the city for square for the lamb is all the light and there is no night there god shall god shall wipe away all tears there's no death, no pain, no nor, pain fears. nor fears, and they count not time by years, by years, for there is no night there. This concludes the song service. I hope that uh, you were able to get involved and uh, that you uh, enjoy praising the Lord in song. I have a short message for you this evening. It is entitled, The Tree of Life. The Tree 
of life. In Revelation chapter 2 and verse 7, the following words are written for us. Revelation chapter 2 and verse 7. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. To him who overcomes, I will give to eat from the tree of life, which is in the midst of the paradise of God. Isn't that a beautiful, isn't that a beautiful verse? Revelation 2, 7. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. To him who overcomes, I will give to eat from the tree of life, which is in the midst of the paradise of God. You know, in a, in a sense, uh, we as human beings, and especially as children of God, we're looking in this world, and what we're looking for in this world is the thing that was lost in Eden. You see, uh, God instructed Adam and Eve not to eat from a certain tree in the, uh, in the garden. We'll talk about that in just a minute. But the, the wonderful thing is that what God has in store for us beyond this world calls for us to hearken back to the original Garden of Eden. That's what the second part of Revelation is all about. The Revelation chapter 2 verse 7 is all about. To him who overcomes, I will give to eat from the tree of life, the tree of life, which is in the midst of the paradise of God. You know, uh, probably above all other things, it's really life that we long for. Now, you know what? We're given a certain amount of time here on earth. We don't know exactly how much time we will have, but we were given, we're given a short amount. Even if we live to be a hundred years in the scheme of eternity, that's uh, less than a sand on, uh, on a beach. Um, we, we know uh, about this physical life. And by the way, we cling to this physical life. Uh, in the world of medicine and, and uh, in the world of technology, we have found a way to cure certain diseases that took people away at much earlier ages in times past. And though, and though we, we really cling to biological life as if it were our most prized possession. And I, you know, I don't know. I, maybe here on earth, our physical life is our most prized possession. What we really desire is what we sang about in these songs. I want a mansion over the hilltop. Paradise Valley. In the land of fadeless day. That city four square. And so, although we cling and we do to biological life as if it were our most prized possession, we know that children of the Lord, we long for things that are much more lasting than this. We really desire more. We desire something more. We long, we long to be alive spiritually. Now, Jesus summed it up in John chapter 10, verse 10, when he said, I have come that they may have life and they may have it more abundantly. Now, you may think that Jesus is talking about life here on earth, and perhaps in some respects he is. But the more abundantly, I believe, is talking about our spiritual lives, our lives which extend when our physical lives are finished. When, when Adam and Eve sinned, they had this desire to know all that God knew. We know that they were deceived, but they should have been smarter. 
And they wanted to know all that God knew, even if it took disobeying him in order to get that knowledge. Did you get that? They, they wanted to do everything possible to have the knowledge of God, and they would go as far as to disobey God to get that knowledge. And they were expelled from the Garden of Eden. And with that, in their eating of the tree of knowledge, their access to the tree of life was cut off. I think God intended for man to live forever. But with Adam, death came, and this is a part of life in itself. Genesis chapter 3, verse 22 to 24, explains that the tree of life was cut off. And as the long years of their mortality, the, as the long years of the life that Adam and Eve lived, they surely must have regretted their decision many times over. I, I can almost hear them saying, if we would only listen to God and not, and not eaten of that tree of knowledge, we could still be in the perfect garden. We could still be in that wonderful garden that God gave to us, where all of our needs were supplied to us. And with that, we know that uh, their heirs, and, and that's us, should be warned. Our own quest for knowledge is a poor substitute for the life that we have lost. The poet Lord Byron expressed it this way, and I believe these words to be true. I think his insight was very, very keen. He said, sorrow is knowledge. They who know the most must mourn the deepest or the fatal truth. And that was entitled, The Tree of Knowledge is Not That of Life. Understand that. Knowledge and life are not the same thing. Now, you know what? We're told to seek knowledge. You know, it is one of those things that in, in Second Peter chapter 1 that we are, are told to do. We're, we're told to seek and know more about God. That's not something that we should shy away from. As we study our Bibles, we're studying to become more knowledgeable in the Word of God, more knowledgeable in the way that God has uh, uh, just instilled this life into us. We, we, we search the Scriptures so that we know the way that we are to live godly lives. In Galatians chapter 5, verse 22 and 23, it talks about the fruit of the Spirit, these wonderful attributes that we are to, to want. And the only way for us to want them and to have them uh, as part of our lives is to know what they are. And that is knowledge. And we are indeed to seek that knowledge. However, through the gospel of Jesus Christ, we can have all that the term life was ever meant to convey. And the amazing thing is that that light is available to us right now. It's available to us in Jesus Christ. And it's, as it's at its very best here on earth. It's a foretaste of the fuller life that lies ahead. 
The kingdom of God here on earth is the church. The church is a foretaste of heaven. I like to use the term, and I don't know whether it's good for me to use the term, but the church and living within the church and living within the format of the way God wants us to live is a dress rehearsal for heaven. We are to live the godly lives that our Lord has set before us as Jesus set the bar for us. That life is what we're reaching for. We're reaching for that mansion over the hilltop. We're, we're reaching to live in Paradise Valley. We're, we're, we're just longing to live in that land of fadeless day. And that life is what we're straining toward. We're, we're straining toward it with every available ounce of our strength. We become an active part of the church and do God's will here on earth so that we will be able to live that life forever with him. And, and the confident, powerful hope that life releases us from the fear of letting go of this life. For the faithful Christian, physical death, although it's not something that we long for, physical death has become a door to real life, to real life, to life with the Lord forever and ever, to life with the loved ones who have died in Christ. It's what we indeed long for. It is that tree of life. Here are the words of the writer of Hebrews in Hebrews chapter 2, verses 14 and 15. Inasmuch then, as the children have partaken of flesh and blood, he himself likewise shared in the same, that through death he might destroy him who had the power of death, that is the devil, and release those who through fear of death were all their lifetime subject to bondage. We don't have to fear physical death. The apostle Paul understood that when he said, I fought the good fight, when he said that he was straining for that next life, when, when he was trying to convey to us how important that was, that life beyond this life, he was willing to go through all of that suffering so that he would continue to do the will of God. So he strained for that life. What he was saying was that we don't have to fear physical death because God promises us the tree of life. He says, he who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. To him who overcomes, that's us. If we overcome the temptations of life, he says, I will give you to eat from the tree of life, which is in the midst of the paradise of God. Isn't that a wonderful thought that we have? That wonderful thought of living forever with the Lord. Now, I don't want you to think that uh, this is modeling, that we ought to be, you know, wanting to die so that we can get there. Life on earth is a wonderful thing lived in its proper way. Life is so pleasurable when we are doing God's will. Uh, life abounds when we have the, the uh, camaraderie with fellow Christians who are on the same walk, who are on the same sojourn with us. As we walk hand in hand and we lift one another up and we encourage each other day by day, 
This is, this is the real essence of what life on earth is all about. But it's a foretaste. It's a foretaste of being in the paradise of God forever and ever. William Penn put it this way, and I think his words are eloquent. He said, he who lives to live forever never fears dying. <laughs> he who lives to live forever never fears dying. Have you ever heard it said that uh, the person who in life has a job that he really enjoys never has to go to work? Well, this is kind of the essence of what William Penn is saying. He who lives to live forever never fears dying. And so we have this wonderful hope, the wonderful hope of uh, the tree of life that is promised to us. But it is only promised to us if we uh, obey the commands of God. He sent Jesus Christ to us. And as we celebrated in the Lord's Supper a little while ago, Jesus gave up his life that we might live. He resurrected from the dead to prove that we too can resurrect from the dead. But it's only promised to those who take that faith of what Jesus is all about, what God is all about, and we take that faith into obedience. That means the only ones that are going to see the tree of life are God's children. If you're not a child of God tonight, if, if you haven't taken God into your life through Jesus Christ, if you haven't confessed him as your savior, if you've not, if you haven't repented of your former life and been baptized through the remission of your sins, you don't have that hope of partaking of the tree of life. And so we offer that invitation this evening. If you need to come to the Lord and start your Christian sojourn here on earth, where others will be there to encourage you and lift you up, now is the time to respond. If you need to respond, get in touch with one of us this evening. We will be there and we will help you in any way that we can. I hope this message opened up our eyes a little bit to what real life is all about. Not just real life on this earth, but real life that is awaiting us. Let's pray together. Our God and Heavenly Father, we're, we're indeed so grateful that Jesus was willing to come to this earth. And in your master plan, he was willing to die for our sins. We cling to his wonderful teachings. And then we cling to what he gave up here on earth as he died. And then we are amazed and uplifted that on the third day, Jesus was resurrected from the dead. And it is with that resurrection that we have hope to live forever with the Lord. Bless us, dear Heavenly Father, as we go on our Christian walk. Help us to do so, understanding that uh, as pleasurable as this walk is, the next walk is going to be amazing. Bless us in, in this life, dear Heavenly Father. Help us to do your will. Help us to serve others as Jesus served others while he was on the earth. Help us to understand that uh, your will should be tender uh, to our touch and should be tender to our understanding. Bless us, dear Heavenly Father, on this walk. Be with us and help us to lift one another up. Help us to encourage one another in love and good deeds. And bless us as we try so hard to come to the aid of others who are lost and others who are in need. Bless us and be with us this evening. Help us to look forward to the next time that we meet together. We pray this in Jesus' most holy name. Amen. Please be safe and may God bless you all. Jesus gave his life a ransom yonder on Calvary. On Mount Calvary, cruel Calvary, paved the way by blood that we might wear a bright shining crown.
praise His holy name. Salvation has been brought down, no glory. Praise the Lord, the Lord. Salvation has been brought down. Praise the Lord, the Lord. Tell today to be 